Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here, WilhiteWX.com. I want to bring you just a little update here on what we can expect tonight and then just briefly touch on what we may be able to expect after another system coming in on Tuesday. And then there's more systems behind that, too. So it's a very busy week of tracking some storms and all of these could have a rain and snow component right into our area. So it's going to be a mess to be able to track. Let's get started. First off, you see some rain already starting to break out to the area. It's 554 uh, central time as I'm recording this. Let me zoom in onto the area just a little bit more here. You can see those showers starting to move in. Uh, radar should start to fill in a little bit more as we go into the overnight hours here. And uh, really what we're going to watch is this area in here to fill in and then it's going to sort of move this way. But you notice, you know, temperatures here in the mid to upper 30s across southwest Indiana and into Kentucky. And you're near freezing uh, in or and uh, to the lower 30s as you get closer towards Indianapolis. But overall, we're above freezing over most of the area here. And it looks like we're probably going to stay that for the duration of the event. Let me show you high res future radar. Again, I mentioned yesterday that that we would really need to see these high res uh, models to be able to get a, a better picture of this because the other models were just really sucking. But we're down into that period now where we can get high res uh, models. These are run every single hour. They only go to 18 hours out. And so they give us a pretty uh, a, as clear of a picture as we possibly can. And the, the highest res model, we got the HER model. You can see there it, it has that uh, as those showers breaking out across the area. It does start to transition to snow in pockets across the area and really the full on transition it has here at about 8Z. So this would be at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. So it's well into the overnight hours before we start to get uh, into that transition there going on. And then you can see it moves off to the area pretty quickly there and you just really don't get a whole lot out of this. Really quickly, one more run of the HER. As I said, this is run every hour. So there are some differences because of that every hour. And just very quickly, you notice that this particular run transitions it for uh, parts of Indiana sooner. But then warm air just sorts uh, of advex right back in there and we stay rain over most of the area and, and it's not until late in, into the hours. So here we are, uh, you know, this is about four or five in the morning before you're starting to see this. And it's really just towards the Lexington area and southeast Indiana that's really uh, getting in on this. And, uh, and, and you know, it, it moves on out after that. The uh, the uh, high res NAM showing something pretty similar as well. Some pockets of snow mixing in. But it's not impressed with this as well either. If we look at what the snow map generates, the latest HER model, the one that didn't regenerate much snow at all for us, you can see uh, high and dry for much of us in a very minor event uh, for the rest of us. The one run prior to that, which was a little snowier, showed this. By the time you get into the blues, you're getting into the one inch here. But again, not a big scenario here. Here's what the high res NAM did. And again, not a big scenario for most of us. This is going to be a pretty minor event overall for all of us. But for most of us, it may even be a non event. Uh, here's my final call snowcast uh, from what I'm thinking. And over most of the area, I'm just going with a coating to one inch. I do think it's possible we could get an overachiever and you can get an isolated more than one inch total here in the white swath that I've placed on here uh, but I think it's going to be pretty isolated overall as you head uh, toward the southwest of uh, Evansville and down towards Bowling Green Paducah uh, those of you watching there you can just expect mostly rain you're probably not even going to transition to snow the way this looks there will be a transition to snow here in the white but it's not going to be an impressive transition and if you want some accumulating snow you really got to go north of Cincy and Indianapolis on up, and that's where you might get an inch. And I think two inches is really going to be on the high side. I think closer to an inch there. And I've put, you know, put it coating to an inch, but I, I think most of us are going to be well under an inch. I really think this is a half inch or under setup for most of us tonight. It's not going to be a uh, big deal for most of us. Now, as we go into Tuesday, we've got another uh, setup that could bring us uh, a little bit of a different story. And unfortunately, here we are facing ourselves right on that rain snow line again. And this is something that I think that we're going to have to get used to as we go into February. There's going to be a very active month. A lot of systems roll through. I think mostly we're going to find ourselves on that rain snow line here. And so uh, as you go through the day on Monday night into Tuesday, you've got this first little swath of snow that starts to move through the area. And you notice it doesn't cover the entire state, but much of Indiana does get covered by this. Kentucky misses out here on this first wave and it angles on by pretty quickly. 
But what you've noticed down here is a low pressure that's starting to develop here and, and it will eventually track off to the east here. As it does, the exact track of that low is going to determine where uh, the snow or any snow that could happen would potentially go. Uh, on the far north side of the low, it would end up being the most cold and could transition that over to snow. Notice that the GFS here has a, the rain snow line being literally the Ohio River. You, you see what a nightmare, a headache of forecasting uh, this really could be. And if the low trends a little bit north, it could toast us and we could be an entire uh, rain. We could be 33 degrees and a very cold rain out of this. If the low tracks a little bit to the south, you know, it, it's possible that we could get more into that snow zone. So. And there's still a wide variety of solutions on the table, unfortunately, with this. And you can see it's not a very strong low. The GFS keeps that low at a 1014, 1015 low. That's a very minor low, so you're not going to get big accumulations with it out of this. Um, if you look at what the Canadian, if I can uh, get back. Well, I didn't put the Canadian on here, did I? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll just go and we'll put what the Canadian was showing you on here. I should have brought that up. My apologies, folks. Here's what, let me back this up. Here's what the Canadian is, uh, is uh, showing for us. There's that first wave moving in on uh, late Monday night into Tuesday. And, and you see it does miss mo the, you know, the majority of the heavier snows with that first swath. Go up to our north to minor snows far down to the south as just a little bit north of the Ohio River. That is gone. And then watch what happens. You've got this low developing, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's again, it's a pretty weak low. But you've got upper level energy phasing with this one. And so you get a pretty uh, vigorous, healthy swath of snow right here along the Ohio River. And you see that the uh, rain snow line is just a little bit further south on this than what you saw in the GFS. But otherwise, pretty similar. The difference uh, that you'll see with this is uh, in how they handle the upper air pattern. So just very briefly, uh, the Canadian here, if you look at the upper air pattern. So what you're seeing here on this, this is energy in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And so you've got the northern branch of the jet stream down here. You've got the southern branch of the jet stream down here. And just notice with me that the Canadian is sort of wanting to marry these two up, these energies phase together. Uh, you remember the old Ghostbusters movies? Uh, don't cross the streams. If you cross the streams, something bad will happen. Uh, if you want snow, you want those streams crossed. Uh, if you don't want snow, then don't cross the streams. Uh, whenever you cross the streams, if you will, you phase these two branches of the jet stream up. You get a, a more vigorous energy in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It can lead to bigger snows and it can lead to more dynamical cooling, which uh, can lead uh, towards a, a cooler thermal profile in the atmosphere. Bottom line, you get more snow out of a phase system than you do out of a non-phase system. Here, the, here's the Canadian model, and it makes a nice phase system for us. If you go back to the GFS, not quite as phase. It's not as robust of a system. Why would that matter? Because if you look at the snow maps, here's the Canadian, and this is what a phase system looks like for the area. And you're looking at a pretty heavy swath of snow. And by the way, when I saw that, I literally laughed out loud and said, yeah, right. Uh, the chances of this verifying are pretty slim. Now, I'm not going to say it won't. Uh, but the chances of the GFS are certainly a lot better. Look at an unfazed system. Well, it, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more tame in the totals. It's still some impressive totals. But honestly, as we get closer to the event, I wouldn't be surprised if these go down because that's been the trend all winter long. You know, you're talking about, uh, you know, 12.4 inches, 8.7 inches. Yeah, right here. But you, you go down to 1.8 and 2.2 uh, whenever you get down to the GFS. That's the difference between a phased and an unfazed system. Will this thing phased up? Well, here's the situation, folks. All winter long, literally, the models have been suggesting on days out that you would see these big storms that have snow totals that sort of look like this. And so you would get these big storms on it. But then once you got about three, two, maybe four days in uh, sh into the shorter range, what you saw is it started to be less of a phased system and the total start to go down. And then all of a sudden, by the time you get to a couple of days before it, it's like, well, what happened? Where did the big totals go? This is like an inch or two. This is not much of anything. Well, because what happened is uh, the it, what happened is uh, the model didn't get the timing right and the phasing never occurred. And so the northern stream might race on and go before the uh, southern stream goes or vice versa. The southern stream might go on and you got a 12 hour difference in between those two pieces of energy. So they don't marry up with each other and you don't end up with a big system. And that's literally the situation that we have faced all winter long here. Uh, we've just not had we've seen the model show this these phase systems with these big totals like this. Uh, but if we are honest, we can probably just X that out and say 
Uh, yeah, right. That's not likely to happen. Uh, I think a more reasonable solution would be what the GFS shows. But even then, I think it may be too much. Uh, I think as you go closer in time, you're going to see this go down because that's what we've had all season long. Now, just uh, by the way, if we were to sort of examine where this uh, this particular uh, piece of energy is right now, let me show you why the models are still struggling and why in a couple of days they'll get better. Uh, the energy that's actually going to create this is this little sh the short wave, this little notch in 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 this uh, spinning around this this uh, Aleutian low up here. And so, uh, your your uh, rotating counterclockwise, your energy, your winds around this, and so uh, you've got this little piece right here that's eventually going to sort of dive like this uh, and come down in. And if it can, you know, meet a piece of energy uh, from down here and phase up we could get a pretty decent system and that's what the Canadian shows. But what happens uh, if this little piece of energy here uh, only makes it to about here and you've got energy uh, down here that makes it over to here and you've got a, a window of opportunity where these two just never meet up here uh, and they're you know a, a 12 hour uh, difference in between them or something like that, uh, then you end up with an unfazed system and the timing of these can sometimes be off and so that's why Frankly, the models have sucked, uh, sucked bad this winter because they've had the timing off on that. Well, when will they get better? Once you see this particular uh, piece of energy rotate on shore, uh, it will get into our upper air network. We've got several stations up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, that uh, the National Weather Service releases balloons up into the atmosphere, and it takes a, uh, it takes a, a meteorological readings up through the atmosphere, and that gets ingested into our computer models, which makes them more accurate. Out here over the ocean, though, we don't have that. And so once it arrives on shore, we'll get that. Well, when will it arrive on shore? Here's where it's at right now. Just watch this little piece of energy eject, and it starts to move on shore. There it is right here. Um, this is not until 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Zero Z Monday is 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. So by tomorrow evening's runs that are initialized, we'll have the first uh, hints of this being partially sampled. And then once uh, once you get into Mondays here, it, the, it's completely on shore here. And so by Mondays, you'll have a full sample of it. So by Sunday night's models and Monday's runs, you'll start to get a, a bit better with this. And just, just a prediction, and we'll see whether I'm right here. We'll revisit in another video. But I would not be surprised in the next two or three runs to see the Canadian completely drop this heavy snow idea and go down to a one to three inch. That's what I think. I don't think this is right at all. I don't think you're going to get a phase system. I wish. I'm a snow lover, and I'd like to see one big snow. And I know many of you are that watch me, too. But I'll be very surprised if that happens. It hasn't happened all winter long. They've got the timing on these off all winter long. And I'm just not sure the cards are going to work right for us out of this. I think a much more minor snow. I think the GFS has a more reasonable idea. But I think it may be a little too juicy as well. It may even start to dial back on this. If we even get snow, it's possible that this low could just be so weak. Uh, and that it tracks a little bit more north and it just gives us rain and very minor snows off to the north. I would not rule that out. I think all options really have to be considered on the table for us at this, at this point. Could, could Tuesday and Wednesday be big snow days around here for us? Yes, but at this point, I really think it's a long shot. We'll revisit that tomorrow night and see where it goes. As for right now, though, again, we've got some minor snows coming in on grassy and elevated areas overnight. Not a big deal with this. Some festive kind of snows, much like Thursday, where it just didn't do a whole lot for us uh, as far as that goes. Well, that's the way this update looks, folks. And, uh, you know, beyond this, if I were to uh, let me just go back uh, to the models and just show you the active period here really is going to continue once you get past. Uh, once you get past the system on Tuesday and Wednesday, notice another clipper system that dives down on Thursday. Uh, you know, it, it, this uh, is the angle on this right. Could that angle down a little bit more towards us in southern Indiana and Kentucky? Absolutely. Uh, the models, uh, the further you go out in time, the less accurate it gets. So there's another one digging in. And then right behind this is another system digging in and then another one uh, following on its heels down there. And all of these are going to vary in placement, especially this far out in time. So there's a lot to track over the coming days. Uh, don't think that just because the model says something this day that far in advance that it's a lock. It's by no means a lock by any means. 
Well, that's it for this update. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Go visit us, wilhitewx.com. By the way, hit the YouTube channel and be sure to click subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can get notifications every time I hit these. Have a great day, folks, and we'll see you soon for the next one.